Hey everybody, how you all doing? Hope you had a good Thanksgiving yesterday. And uh, I'm here to show some beetle finds. Uh, got a lot of recent stuff. Um, I'm going to start with this one. Today's record store day. Um, Black Friday record store day. And I've already got a uh, Beatles offering that's coming out. Um, it's a reissue of the Long Tall Sally EP. Um, from the UK. I don't intend on opening it up. Uh, I have these songs many times and old EPs and old 45s and albums. I don't need to play it really. So for now I'm going to leave it sealed. It's got the Record Store Day sticker still on it. And uh, you know, it's nice to have this. Uh, personally, uh, I wish that when they did Record Store Day releases, I wish they would do something completely different. You know, and rather than reissuing the same old records, I just w wish there would be an exclusive song collection EP here, maybe something we've never seen before with a totally different cover. But it's good that the Beatles have something for Record Store Day. So that takes care of that one. Uh, here's an interesting item. It's the UK pressing the Hey Jude album from 1970. And uh, it's beautiful because, I mean, it's laminated. You know, it's got that English bright, there it is, lamination on it. And now, I didn't realize this, but the record supposedly has a couple of misprints on it. Which, uh, here is the rare version of this record. I don't know. It's on Apple. And one of them, instead of saying revolution, the song uh, has revolutions, or plural, with an S. <coughs> and um, paperback writer is also split. Instead of the word paperback is one, it's paper space back. So that's a, a little a couple of oddities on this one. So, um... This was really nice. I, I don't usually don't usually come across uh, this album. I don't think I've ever seen the UK version. Here's a uh, an import from Israel, an Israeli import of Wings Wildlife, and it's got the same deal going with the laminated cover. Back is a little dirty, but and uh, I don't think it can be seen so easily. But uh, on the label, well, you can. Well, one thing you can see is that you have the indentation here. If you look, you know, a deep cut there. Um, it's it's uh, has a stamper on here of the UK, even though supposedly it is an Israeli album. That's what I'm told, anyway. Uh, so, that's the deal with this one. Okay, next one. Next one I'm going to show is a common album. But even though it's common, I got a really nice copy of it. And I don't really want to take it out of here. Um, it's the Beatles White Album. And it's really... It's an original. Uh, it's really clean. And... Funny thing about this is, I actually found a way to make this cleaner. A lot of times when you see the White Album in used record shops, and that's the case in my used record shop, I mean, they've got like 100 copies of these, and they're all filthy. But I learned a secret. Glass wax. If you use glass wax, you know, wax on, wax off, you wind up getting this thing to look really shiny and white, and that's what happened. This is an early copy because it's got... Uh, a black dot on it so it's an earlier copy black dot and then it says it has a zero black dot zero oh seventy oh seven seven six one three two for those people that are into the earlier pressings now here's a different a difference you got to go from a very white album to a very dirty album here this is a, an oddity that I got for nothing I was allowed to take this for nothing. It was uh, called The Beatles Story. <coughs> Excuse me, allergies. Beatles Story, and you know, it's kind of dirty. But it's a one of a kind. I say one of a kind. I mean, I've never seen this before. I got it for nothing. Just given to me. It uh, is a really lousy 
documentary where it talks about uh, you know how the Beatles came to be and how they got so popular I assume it's it's there from it's from 1964 or it's early or 65 maybe and it's got songs on here twist and shout she loves you uh, can't buy me love and I want to hold your hand but it's not sung by the Beatles it's sung by some other terrible group in between the in between the documentary and narration but, uh, you know, anything Beatles related that's uh, for collectible purposes and, you know, uh, this is a very, very thick record. Very thick and old-fashioned. AAI Records. And it says, The Beatles Story by Mark Century. So, Mark Century gave us this wonderful piece of Beatles lore. For all collectors to hunt down. All right. Next, here was a really good find. This is a very hard to find Paul McCartney album, and I got this sealed. I found it at uh, a different record store, not my usual record store. It's a sealed copy of Twin Freaks, and uh, I had a coupon. $10 off coupon, so I got $10 off this. So the final price um, is, is a lot less than what you see this for online. So, I mean, it did, you know, it's not a cheap, cheap record, but it's, it wasn't brutally expensive either, especially with the $10 coupon off. So, uh, you know, as soon as I find out, folks, how to take a photo of the thumbnail, this is going to be the thumbnail with me like this. <laughs> Okay. As soon as I figured out how to how to do that, I'm all set up for custom thumbnails. I mean, I did what I had to do. I have the option there. It's just that I don't know how to snap a picture of a frame here, and put it on the one you want. Now, don't ask me why I bought this. This is a laser disc. It's a laser disc of uh, Paul McCartney the Get Back video concert from the 1989 tour, 1990 tour, and uh, it was very cheap. Uh, nobody really wants laser disc movies anymore, so the cover alone is worth it. So I picked it up for like just a few dollars. Okay, here's a copy of the Beatles for Sale album from Germany. This uh, you, you can't really tell in the video, and once once I have it in the clear, you know, thin kind of plastic outer sleeve, it, it looks shiny and it looks good. But this is in pretty bad shape. This album. So it didn't cost much, and uh, you know it's kind of it's kind of dirty. It's written on. Um, but the reason that I wanted this, I used to have this record in my old Beatles collection. For all I know, I still may have it in my new one. I might have got it again. I don't know. But uh, usually, it's on the blue Odeon label when you find the copy. This one was on the uh, white Odeon label. Which I believe, I mean, I'm not an expert. You know, I know I know a lot about the Beatles records, but not as much as some other collectors. I'm guessing this is an original, or if not an original, an earlier pressing. Yeah, well, anyway, it's a different pressing than the blue label that we usually see. So that was worth getting anyway for me. So I went ahead and picked it up, and as I say, it's not expensive. Huh. Now here's a record that I've only seen pictured in books. Never seen this out in the wild. And I guess saying wild actually fits the description of this album. It's, it's this one. No one's going to change our world. And it's for the, uh, the stars sing for the World Wild Wildlife Fund. And uh, there are the Beatles up there. You know, this is the... This is, uh, you know, the Beatles, Bee Gees, Silla Black and on. This is the album that uh, they contributed the song Across the Universe to, for this album, for this project. And I have never seen this uh, out in the wild. It's a UK album, UK release, and uh, happy to put that in my collection. Now here's an album that I've never been able to get in good shape until now. I'm going to take it out of the plastic. It's this one. Um, it's a collection of Beatles oldies. 
but it's got the shrink wrap on it. It's a laminated cover anyway, I think, but uh, this is not a UK. This is a German copy, German, German pressing. So um, still got the shrink wrap on it. And in really, really like minty shape. But this, I'm pretty sure, this is the blue label. Yeah, this is this is the Odeon label I was talking about for the Beatles for Sale album uh, previously. This is the label I'm used to seeing, which I think is a later label. And this is when we need people here, you know, that really know their stuff. I mean, like I say, you know, my girlfriend's always say, oh, you know so much about the Beatles. And I say, I know... Uh, a lot about the Beatles compared to, to, to many people but I don't know as much as some others you know um, especially when it comes to grading certain kinds of labels I mean I really need to brush up on some of that and uh, get it together as far as figuring out you know uh, the differences and the nuances uh, some things are no some things not as well versed on okay now this uh, <laughs> This is my umpteenth copy of this album. <coughs> I'm sorry about the coughing today. Um, this is the Hard Day's Night album, the UA, in beautiful shape. And in the uh, original shrink wrap still, uh, you can see the shrink wrap in here. Beautiful, beautiful shape. Um, the reason I bought this, I mean, I've got this album so many times over, it's not even funny. But I bought it because I like this this variation of the United Artists label, and this label was actually the first label that I ever owned of this album. Um, around 19, I'm going to say 1975, or something like that. Uh, I was just a, I was a young kid, and uh, I think I I think I bought this on my own. Either that, or I was given it. A, no, I think I was given it as a Christmas gift. That's right. And. Uh, <clears throat> I got a bunch of Christmas uh, Beatle albums that year. So 13 years old. And anyway, this is the label that I got. So, uh, you know, for old times sake. And uh, always taking advantage of any opportunity to get an album that's in really nice shape with a cover that looks flawless. <clears throat> so, right off the, the record racks. So, uh, okay, now... I have some other stuff here. I'm not done yet. Um, my last videos, uh, I showed uh, some Japanese pressings. Well, I got some more Japanese pressings. Uh, these are going to be four EPs, or three EPs and 145. <clears throat> the first is this one. It's got Michelle, Girl, Nowhere Man, and What Goes On on it. Uh, Japanese 45. And I bel or I say 45. Uh, is it, no, let me scratch that. It's 33 and a third. It plays at the LP speed. So even though these are seven inch, seven inches is the correct term for these things, right? Seven inch records, even though it plays on 33. 45 is not really the correct term for these. Um, I believe this one is on a standard black vinyl. So I'm just going to show that. And you can see that ODR 33 compact. Uh, it's hard, hard to get this one back in, so I'll do that after the video is ended. All right, now these are on red wax. You can see in the label, red wax. Okay. Um, there's one here, you can see, the, you can probably read the songs yourself. Well, Hard Day's Night, I Should Have Known Better, Please Mr. Postman, and I Love Her. And the back uh, has, it's the same thing, 33 speed, 33 and a third. And uh, only this time, we got the red vinyl, red wax. So uh, I'm really lucky that uh, a slew of these in recent times... I wound up getting. You know, I don't like wasting time putting things back in their package when the camera's running because I know how tedious that is to, to wait for when you're watching. Okay, next one. Got another red wax. Red wax. Alright. 
and this one here we've got uh, twist and shout please please me I want to hold your hand and she loves you and it's the same red wax 33 speed stereo <clears throat> now this is interesting let me take this one out of the plastic right off the bat it's a Ringo Starr photograph solo single from Ringo uh, but the difference is this one too is on red wax so that's really nice to have this one with the star on there and everything Ringo and the star tin foil <laughs> looks like tin foil <clears throat> So, okay. Ah, this is something that I got for free. It's a original magazine. It was given this to me for nothing. Uh, celebrating the Beatles movie Help, 1965, when Help first came out, and it's got a lot of rare pictures in it. The only the reason I got it for free is it looks good in the bag, right? When you take it out, you realize the front cover and back cover are disconnected. So. But uh, it's a vintage 60s magazine. It's got a poster in here, which I won't take out. There's George. Uh, it's a color poster you can remove, but I'm not going to do it. And while I can't show every page here, I mean, uh, it's just there's just a lot of photos that you don't usually see. And that's always one of the advantages if you can track down some old stuff like this. Uh, here's part of the color poster, from John. <clears throat> See, here's a kind of example of a photo. It's not in the movie. It's Paul, the woman. Don't know the details of this. Uh, there's a. Uh, Beatles getting instructed, I guess. Anyway, lots of good photos in here and for nothing. <clears throat> so, I'll just try to piece this back together somehow. Here's one more. The inner cover shot. <clears throat> try, to, try to piece this together somehow. It was nice to have this. Too bad it's detached, but... Beggars can't be choosers, you know that old saying? So, I have a couple of things left to show in this rather lengthy video. Um, kind of interesting there. Eight track tape boxes that were only like two bucks a piece. This is All Things Must Pass. Now, the box, it's just cool to have the box for eight tracks. I've never seen this. Now, they're not in great shape, that's why they're so cheap. you know they're bashed in I tried to put these together the best I could you know those creases they came kind of squashed I got one other one of these I'll show in a minute but uh, I really like that never seen this before and unfortunately when you open it up I mean uh, it's not complete I bought this mostly for the box I don't really care so much about the tape there's only one a track in here it's supposed to be two a track tapes there's only one here so I need to get the other one and uh, this is number two which means that basically I'm missing the better one this is the the jam the Apple jam cassette you know so uh, I want the original one the first one that has uh, the album itself really on it but anyway now another one also there is this one in a little better shape I think not as crushed it's John Lennon Yoko Ono sometime in New York City the box this is the a track tape box in better shape put together and staying together I mean I've never seen these you don't usually come across these boxes so it was really nice to have and to find from, you know from collection same thing as, as the all things must pass though uh, there's only one a track in here there's supposed to be two so 
And this one again, same thing. This is the second one, not the first one with the album proper on it. This is the actual jam uh, or yeah, yeah, live jam, John and, and Yoko Plastic Ono Band. So I don't really have the actual album, but you know, I can always look for those down the line. So for a couple of bucks, nice to have those, huh? Well, anyway, that, that's going to be it for this video, but I'm going to do another one right away because I've also got some Elvis Presley stuff uh, to show. So if anybody here is inter interested in Elvis, and even if you're not, as I always say, uh, there's some interesting finds in there for people that just like collecting, period. So uh, be sure to tune in. Thanks. Enjoy Record Store Day today.